In a few decades, the steak on your plate may not come from a cow. To satisfy the world's growing appetite for meat, I believe that using the knowledge of stem cells, cultured meat may be a next source of food in the future. Today we get most of our meat from animals raised for that purpose, but in a decade or so, it may be possible to create meat in a lab. No acres of pasture for grazing, no barn and no slaughterhouse. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimate that 30% of Earth's ice-free land is directly or indirectly involved in livestock production. And with the global population on the rise, the incentives to grow cultured meat have sparked interest in many scientists, including me. As New Zealand and the global demand for meat, it is necessary to evaluate the sustainability of current meat production by traditional means. Meat without brain and pain is what I call cultured meat and could reduce the pressure from livestock on the global climate. The first cultured meat would primarily be ground meat, of course, used to make burgers and sausages. That's a huge market in the meat industry. In New Zealand, about 42% of beef is sold as ground meat. That's about $2.5 billion we would be earning annually without the expense of land, water and fuel used in traditional means. You might ask, why should we change to a meat grown in a lab when we, as humans, have been raising livestock from the land for centuries? Dip is the answer. It's in demand, it's inefficient and it pollutes. For the next 40 years, the global demand will double. A single cow consumes about 2.7 kilograms of plant protein, but only producing half a kilo of meat. Livestock contributes 9% of carbon dioxide and 37% of methane gas. Cultured meat is far more superior than traditional meat. This is because cultured meat cells would eat far less than any animals would. Animals require energy to keep warm and to move, and to gain energy from consuming food, a huge part of the land must be used. I believe that this is the idea of the century, having to produce meat without the need of killing an animal. All this would happen without any genetic manipulation, without the need to interfere with the cell's genetic sequences that so many people have criticised its very methods. We look back to a hundred years ago where slavery was acceptable. There is no moral justification for taking the rights of a human to promote our own. In another hundred years, how will we justify killing animals as humans to create food when we can produce meat using science and technology? Ladies and gentlemen, the way forward, the ethical way forward, is in cultured meat.